Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 137. It's on stimulated emission. Imagine we had a red light like this. What kind of photons would it give off? It would give off red photons, and in what direction? They would move in all different directions. But wouldn't it be cool if we could take all of those photons and point them in the same exact direction? We can. That's called a red laser. They're all going what we call coherently or in the same direction, and we create that using stimulated emission. And so if you have an atom at a low energy level, it can be stimulated. And stimulated means it's hit with a photon. And so if we stimulate that atom, it can take the energy of the photon and move to a higher energy level. We call that stimulated absorption. It's absorbing the energy of that photon. Now if it falls back down again, it would give off the same exact photon. And we call that spontaneous emission. Spontaneous because nothing happened to it. It just occurred spontaneously. Now the probability without a photon of moving to a higher energy level are incredibly small and a really high probability of falling back down again. But what would happen if the atom has already been stimulated? It's at a higher energy level and it gets stimulated again. So instead of moving to an even higher energy level, watch what happens. One photon comes in and in stimulated emission, two photons come out. And so the energy is used to create an identical photon and we call it stimulated because it was hit by another photon. And so if we look at this using an energy diagram, in order for that atom to be excited, it has to ha get the proper amount of energy. And it does that using a corresponding photon. The wavelength, therefore the frequency of this, has to match exactly to the energy between those two energy states. Now as another photon comes in, during that emission we're going to create two identical photons. And now let me show you how that plays out if we have a number of different atoms. So let's say one atom is stimulated, gets hit by a photon, how many is it going to kick off? Two. And those are going to go coherent to each other, and that's going to kick off two, two from each of those atoms that it hits. And so you can see how this is just building on itself. Now if we can put these inside a container where we reflect those photons back and forth, we'd use mirrors on either side, then we can start to build up a laser or this stimulated emission. So to show how this occurs, we're going to use a PHET simulation. We're going to hit this one atom with different wavelengths of light. You can see the energy doesn't match up perfectly to jump to the next energy level, but I can change the wavelength of the light. And if I get it the right wavelength, you can see what's happening. Now it's starting to jump to the upper level and then it's falling back down again. You can also see these coherent photons. Those photons are are starting to travel next to each other. If this is a laser, we could put mirrors on either side. They're going to bounce back and forth. And then the mirror on the right, we could just decrease the reflectivity a little bit. And those photons are going to move out and they're going to move out coherently. And so did you learn how changes in the energy levels of atoms is tied to either the absorption or emission of photons? I hope so. And I hope that was helpful.